Hello everyone, welcome to Indian Judisha Service. Today we are going to starting here a new video series which is related to the Specific Relief Act 1963. In this series we discuss total 150 MCQs. These MCQs are very important and we will discuss also the provision of Specific Relief Act 1963. So, before starting this video, I request you please like and share our videos and if you still not subscribe our channel, please subscribe it. This channel will be very helpful for your preparation. So, without wasting our time, let us get started. Now, before starting question number 1, now we discuss here some important point related to the Specific Relief Act 1963. So, first of all important point is on which date Specific Relief Act 1963 come into the force. So, it come into the force on 1st March, 1st March 1964 and this act uh, classify into 3 parts. So, it is classified into 3 parts and these 3 parts divided into 8 chapters. So, this is another important point these parts divided into 8 chapters and these 8 chapter contain 42 sections sorry 42 section. So, 42, 42 section there were 44 section but uh, amendment act 1974 I mean repealed two act two sections section 43 and 44. So, in present time there is there are only 42 sections. Now question number 1 the readiness may mean capacity of plaintiff to perform contract which include option A performance of plaintiff option B potential of plaintiff option C willingness of plaintiff and now option D financial ability of plaintiff. So, clearly answer here option D financial ability of plaintiff. Now, question number 2 where applicant neither necessary nor proper party in a suit of specific performance whether his presence is necessary for effective jurisdiction. So, clearly where the applicant neither necessary nor proper party in a suit of specific performance. So, in this case the applicant presence is not necessary for effective adjudication. So, clearly answer here option B no. Now, question number 3 specific relief can be granted for. So, specific relief can be granted for enforcing individual civil right. So, answer here option A and remaining is enforcing penal law both civil and penal law neither civil nor penal law. So, these options are absolutely wrong so, answer here option C enforcing individual civil right. Now, question number 4 under the specific relief act a suit for recovery of possession this is very important word can be filed. So, this question related to the section 6 especially and section 7. So, section 6 related to the immoral property where the possession dispossess the person can file a suit and it is related to the moval property. So, first option here only respect of moval property option B only in respect of moval immoral property option C here in respect of both movable and immoval property and option D here neither moval nor immoval property. So, answer is here option C in respect of both movable and immovable property. Now, question number 5. Which of the following section of specific relief act deals with recovery of specific immovable property? So, clearly here answer option 5. The section 5 related to the recovery of specific immovable property. The person who is entitled to get the possession of a specific moral property may file the suit for recovery of specific immoral property. So, answer here option C this thing is provided in section 5. Now, question number 6 under order or decree passed in a suit presented under section 6 this is very important of the specific relief act is. So, an order or decree passed in a suit presented in section 6 of the specific relief act is not appealable nor reviewable. So, it is clearly answer here option C neither appealable nor reviewable. So, here option C, but it is under the provision of 
section 115 of cpc it is the subject of revision so answer here option c now question number 7 the specific relief act is the product of so clearly specific relief act is the product of ninth report of the law commission of india on specific relief act 1877 so answer here option b now question number 8 a suit for possession of an immoral property under section 6 of specific relief act can be filed within so can be filed within six months of dispossession so answer here option b and this thing is clearly provided in section 6 subsection 2 clause a so answer here option b now question number eight sorry question number nine a suit for recovery of possession of an immoral property under section six this section is very important please read this section so of sra can be filed against so can be filed against a private individual only so answer here option a so uh, the the suit for recovery of possession of immoral property under section 6 of SRA cannot be filed against a state government and this thing is clearly provided in section 6 subsection 2 clause b so answer of this question is here option a now final question of this video question number 10 the burden of proof proof adverse possession is on option a court option b defendant option c plaintiff and option d none of the above so clearly burden of proof adverse possession is on plaintiff so answer here option c now we are going to finish this video and if you like this video please click on like button and if you still not subscribe our channel please subscribe it and if anybody want the pdf file of this video series the pdf file will be uploaded in our telegram group the link of telegram group is available in our description box please go and join that group and before fin finishing this video i request you please share this video to your friends and relatives thank you for watching indian judicial service